Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. A lot of people have been asking about this subject and just today, or I think it was yesterday, the same subject came up and someone basically was getting a slightly not quite perfect result with their printer. Presumably the monitor is calibrated. I cannot say for sure because I'm not there. But they were wondering about creating a profile and what is it that they really need to do that? Well, the simplest way to create a profile, say if you buy paper from a manufacturer, they often provide you a profile for your printer for that paper that you bought from them, but it has to be for OEM ink. So say for instance, that is the case, but you're not using OEM ink, you're using a third party product now you need a custom profile. So what you need to do in this case is to download, if they offer you this, a set of patches that you will then print by opening them or it. It could be a single one, it could be multiple files in an application that will not alter the color space of that file, that image file, okay? Photoshop will alter it. Lightroom will. QImage, on the other hand, especially the ultimate version, will allow you to open that file without any alteration to its color space or anything having to do with color management. It will just open it raw and then you have to print it with your particular printer setting the driver to no color management. So no one, no one is trying to manipulate the color. It is printed raw then they will scan that okay using probably an x-rite product and argyle An argyle is an open source um, icc profile creation tool it does many other things by the way extremely difficult to use it is a command prompt type tool okay now the question arose because the person thought they can just download the software install it print the charts and then send it to someone who has, say, a color monkey photo and that they would scan them for them and produce a profile. Well, no, that's not going to work. And I'll tell you the reason why I'm going to give you a, a small walk through the process for the color monkey or the i1 studio by the way the same identical process for both of those spectrophotometers and it goes this way so in order for you to be able to even use that instrument you have to have it registered through the software and not necessarily online but it has to detect it and then it will give you the go ahead to proceed so the first thing that you will print is your regular standard set of color patches. And this is what the Color Monkey Photo and the i1 Studio will ask you to print. Okay, so it'll be the same set of colors with the same identical values every single time you create a profile using either your Color Monkey Photo or your i1 Studio. The same exact patches. Remember that. So there's no way for me to say, oh, why don't you save me this image as a TIFF? No, you can't. You have to generate it with the software. You then print it through the software. So remember, the software is not going to alter anything. It generates it. You print it with no color management in your driver. Okay? You let it dry. You proceed to scan it. After you scan each one of those patches, the software, through the use of that spectrophotometer, okay, the Color Monkey Photo or i1 Studio, I gotta keep repeating that so you know what I'm talking about, is going to determine the amount of error that it finds from what it was the original value and what the printer produced, okay? And believe me, there is going to be errors. Okay, the printer by itself cannot produce a same color match as those original values that were generated. Okay, so what you see here is not a correct rendition of what was on the screen, period. So after it determines the error this way or that way, it's going to then compute all of that information and generate a secondary set. 
And this is the reason why you cannot just print these charts and send them to someone. Because first you have to print the first one. Someone, either you or someone with you, has to scan it in order for the software to generate this secondary, and here's the magic word, custom set of color patches. These patches are generated because of the results the spectral photometer got when they scan these, okay? These are your standard colors. These are the same every single time. These are not the same every single time, okay? These, these patches will be generated depending on the results of that first one after you scan it, okay? So the second one is custom generated. The first one is standard, okay? And that is why you either have to have a Color Monkey Photo or an i1 Studio a spectrophotometer in your premises for you to be able to create a profile with the Color Monkey Photo or again the i1 Studio. So that is it. So, <laughs> what to take home? You cannot just print that and send it to Joe to scan. I cannot use my Color Monkey Photo to scan your prints because you would have to have that Color Monkey Photo because the second chart is generated as a result of the scans of the first chart. Now, with a regular professional level spectral photometer, it is a bit different. With that one, you literally generate a full set of patches and yeah, you could send it to me to scan. It's a different process. You generate the patches or I give you the files. That's what's magical about that. And that's what all of the paper manufacturers do. They give you the files that you then print using an application that doesn't alter the color. And of course, printing with no color management. Then you let that dry and then you ship it to them. They scan it and they produce an ICC profile. It will work because they only need one chart or three charts. There's no further generation of charts after that. All of the information is gotten from that first set. And this is what they look like. Now, I use a random distribution of the color patches. You can arrange this any way you want through the software. I prefer this method here. And so I have created a 16 100 patch set. Each one of those patches is individually scanned twice, by the way. And again, just like with the first one, the errors are detected and compensated for, but only one scanning this time. Okay, one single scanning produces the ICC profile because there are sufficient number of patches here for it to do that. Not so with the Color Monkey. It only produces 50 initial color patches. It has to do an immense amount of calculations to determine what would exist between two color patches because it's not 1600 like I can do here. Okay, so I can give you this file to print. You print it again, print it using the correct conditions, give it to me or give it to someone else. And they have the unit and they can go ahead and scan it and produce a profile for you across the country. No can do with the color monkey. Just keep that in mind, okay? Interpolation is the king when it comes to this one. It has to do some here, but not as much as it needs to do with only 100 total patches rather than 1,600 patches. So again, the take-home message, as I said before, is no, you cannot get away with doing that with a color monkey, okay? You either borrow one, rent one, or have someone come over to your place and create it there in-house for you. Now, what happens? What about these two? How do they differ in the maybe accuracy or is one better than the other? You know, the results of one profile here or there, larger gamut volume between the two. Okay, we really do not know because I don't think too many people have done that kind of comparison. I kind of did, but I could not do the direct comparison due to a couple of problems that cropped up. That's on my video that I did on this subject matter. You can go back and check that out. But the results were quite excellent. Now, before you do any kind of printing, any kind of, you know, profile creation, make sure you're and also check it's 100% per 1,000. Make sure it's 100%. 
okay always always otherwise otherwise your results are just not going to be valid okay you have to have a perfectly clear print head now i want you to look at these three standard evaluation images you you know maybe with the lighting here by the way one of my banks just died the other day and um, i gotta get a new umbrella the lights are fine but the bank is not so anyway take a look at this region here and tell me if you see a degree of difference that you can detect on video you probably cannot let me give you the other th half And again, you probably want to concentrate on the central monochrome image here. See if you see any kind of change in, in color balance. And you might, again, because of the uneven lighting here, we have some daylight popping in. That's at 6,500. These are 5,500 lights. So you might see a difference. But again, I tell you, there is no difference here face to face. The kids' faces... They are perfect as these are and as these are. So the question is, should I just use an OEM profile that's provided for me by Canon? This is Canon uh, Platinum Gloss. And I use the Pro 100 over there with PCSE inks. So let's look at the back and see what profile I really used. This is the OEM profile. We'll put one that right here. This is the Color Monkey Photo profile right here. So that's on top. And the i1 Pro 2 profile at the very bottom. And again, we'll try to line them up as best we can here. And again, I can't tell the difference. I'll, I'll, I'll move them around in case the lighting is different on the top or at the bottom. What I do see is I actually see a little bit of blocking right here. Okay. And it's a little bit more open on the other ones, but it's very minute. It's nothing that you can really detect. Now, the OEM one is in the back. The Color Monkey is in the middle right here. So this one's OEM. Color Monkey i1 Pro 2. Let's look at these rendition here of this ramp and again i'm just going to take my glasses off so i can see i see no change in neutrality i see no banding during the transition of tones and of course oem still no banding at all a critical one is this one here this row this row and let's line this up again in this row right here. These are all out of gamma colors, okay? When you when you view them using gamma warning, they're all gray, all blocked. So out of gamma completely. You can see the difference. I mean, if there is any, I really don't see much difference. Slight, slight, but you know, not much. And again, those are colors, that's not what they look like on the screen. This is the best that the printer can do, okay? The colors on the screen are just so neon-like that it's just ridiculous. It's impossible for any printer to reproduce them as you see them on a transmitted light monitor. Uh, remember, this is, this is uh, reflective light. So it's going to be dulled down, always will be dulled down from what you see on your monitor. And again, so that shows you that even the Color Monkey, compared to three times the price, right here can actually almost nose to nose as far as the output and a lot of us are not going to bother you know looking at this under special software to determine the gamut volume to determine where does you know this profile extend more than the other one no we're just going to print with it and we're going to look at our photos that's what our eyes are for so that's going to this is going to be our instrument that's going to determine whether the unit that we have is good or not, okay? Whether it's actually doing good or not doing good compared to whatever other system you're using. 
You can also use that system to compare someone else's profiles for that paper, for that ink, and so forth, and the printer. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And uh, like I said, you know, you just have to think. And this was actually uh, suggested by someone. I guess they, they just didn't know. You cannot just do what they thought you could do with this. This requires two sets of patches to be generated. One is a standard, and then the other one is generated custom. All right? So I hope that wasn't too confusing. One of these days, I'm going to give you another demo on the computer. Maybe I'll do that during one of the live streams. Uh, certainly not right now, or I'll, everybody will go to sleep. All right, so thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. And by the way, okay, it's not all about x ray I will be, hopefully, from the UK receiving a Spider X from Datacolor. Again, it's a third-party distributor in the UK will be sending me a unit for me to test. So the reason I usually don't talk about data color is because I have never used one. So it's not a matter of whether one is better than the other, but the fact that I just have never used one. So how could I possibly give you a demonstration or talk about it? You know, so, all right. So that is it for now. Thank you so much. We'll see you the next time. Happy printing, everybody, and bye-bye.